this is interesting because you know get, let's get into some of these conspiracy issues and I, I really don't know what the what the answer is on some of these things you know when you bring up uh, columbine or sandy hook or the boston bombing uh, the 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 alternative media or the truth the so-called truth community have varying opinions on what occurred many of them are i think they many of them agree that what the mainstream media told us happened to these events didn't happen where the controversy is what did happen which is natural i guess you know obviously you're going to have of not knowing knowing what didn't happen is is easier than knowing what did happen if if these situations are being manipulated or concocted in some way um but I've heard a lot of talk, and when people, when some of these other conspiracy theorists or investigators, I guess, uh, entertain theories of complete fakery, they're written off as nuts. You can't do this, even if it were true, you shouldn't say it because it's going to alienate people. And it's going to shut down people that are not, not going to hear because it sounds so weird to them. Despite the fact that there's evidence of extreme fakery, would you agree that there's, there's some strange things that are occurring? A good example would be the. Um, for me, the, the the behavior of the alleged victims, you know, whether it's the the happy double amputee, yeah. uh, the, the 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 parent who just lost a daughter, you know, Bobby Parker laughing coming out, and then and some of these things are so obvious. Could it be that these these situations, the fakery is itself part of the psyop and the the obvious nature of it to get the people stirring, debating, and then that reaction is that is then being observed by the psychological warfare agents. I mean. Absolutely. Um, and I, yeah. I said that in articles and, and it posts. Um, and I think that was my said, well, why would you do that? Well, one reason you might do that is because if you can confuse the possibility in the perception of the mass and the populace as to what even constitutes reality, then you've completely and effectively neutralized the possibility of any resistance or any any sort of uh, questioning or investigation uh, in terms of public opinion. So even though you know we tend to talk about well you know everybody's a zombie, everybody's brainwashed. Well, yeah, but uh, at the same time, if it wasn't, it's crucial that public opinion be controlled, be be uh, managed, and swayed. Or else they wouldn't exert so much time and research and, and money and manpower into managing it. So um, my thesis, my speculation, suspicion would be that what happens when you create this dust up of smoke and mirrors and 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 layers of deception, layers of uh, almost psyops within psyops, uh, what that does is it just completely mystifies uh, the public. So, you know, average Joe is not going to sp spend most of his time trying to get to the bottom of this. Uh, and in my own uh, experience, in terms of actually being on the ground in terms of uh, investigative journalism in two or three different important um, situations, uh, in both in the cases that I saw, I, I was able to get a good picture of the importance of being on the ground. I mean, this is kind of why, you know, reporters, uh, news agencies send reporters to be on the ground is because there's so there's so much potential for misinformation or deception. So being on the ground in a situation like Sandy Hook, I think would have been would have been crucial to to have a much better picture of what's going on, because there's again there, the potential for psychological warfare operations or black operations to be intimately layered with deception and intimately planned is far greater than most people think. Um, so myself coming from having studied the history of fiction in terms of psyops and, and the study of uh, the history of psychological warfare operations um, from wartime into the Cold War to present, uh, I think if you have a, in other words, it's, it's more so a question of what most people think is possible. So for most people, they don't even conceive of that as possible. So that's why it's it's uh, already from the outset, you know, crossed off the spectrum. It's, that's not even considered possible. So you're crazy for even considering that. Uh, when you have a background or, or an understanding of the power and influence of Hollywood, of media, and their intimate relationship with intelligence agencies, it's much more 
conceivable. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that I know for sure all the different details of what happened. But what I'm saying is that it does give me the perspective to say, well, yeah, this kind of stuff happens all the time. I mean, just a couple examples uh, off the top of my head. Well, if you think about, um, you know, what's that CIA guy's name? Uh, Mendez, uh, he has a book called Master of Disguise, and he, his book is the basis for oh, yeah, Orgo. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I'll see, we've all seen, I don't believe that the plot that's put it forward in Argo is accurate, but it does give an illustration of how wide that kind of a deception can happen. It's sort of a, a Hollywood psyop, if you will, where, you know, they're going to go under the auspices of shooting this B movie. They're going to rescue these, uh, uh, Iranian hostages. Uh, I personally don't think that's what happened in the in really in that situation. Uh, I think that there was uh, Iran Contra money aiding that a re a revolution, but that's a different different issue. That's uh, Stephen Doral talks about that, and Robert Dreyfus talks about that. But aside from that issue, that's an example of uh, you know a guy who writes a book uh, from the CIA who is an expert in these kind of staging these kinds of things. Uh, again, hence his yeah title, master of disguise uh you know and and the history of hollywood uh you know goes i think there's much to suggest the long relationship between the cia and hollywood um there's again hundreds of examples that you could find from this you can go to my site i've got plenty uh, jennifer garner for example she plays a spy in alias and yet she's doing pr for the cia uh Her that's husband. on the cia's <laughs> website yeah. uh yeah ben affleck says uh Hollywood's full of CIA, right? So, uh, you know, Julia Child, uh, you know, TV cook, while well, she's also yeah. working for my Fox. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, come on, British intelligence it runs the BBC. I mean, this should be this should be obvious stuff. You would think that people wouldn't, but they don't know this. So, but when you have a, you know, all of that in your in your mind in the background, considering the possibility of Sandy Hook, it's not hard to see how that's possible. Uh, think about that news clip that everybody's seen by now, surely. Uh, where Conan O'Brien plays the, you know, all these local news stations from different affiliates, yeah. all reading the same script. Why would that? Why would that be? Well, it's all put forth on the teleprompter by these, you know, centralized. Used to be a CBS had one central locale that they sent this feed out to everybody, uh, but it's ultimately it's still you know the CIA Pentagon scripting that's uh, you know putting out mockingbird media information. So it's no different. Uh, I'm just giving examples that, you know, when we think about all of this in concert, then we can come to the, to a situation like Sandy Hook and we can say, well, you know, here, here they are. We know there are crisis actors. <laughs> That's a fact. There are, these are real uh, groups of people who, you know, sign up to, I guess they want to be actors in Hollywood and couldn't make, I don't know what, what they're after, but you know, many times they're, uh, you know, connected to Democratic Party, especially. Uh, many times they're connected to these international organizations that are, for example, with Sandy Hook, uh, working towards gun treaties, gun disarmament, gun confiscation, you know, all these. Uh, so all of that's in the background with, the, with these people. Um, you know, and I've been involved in exposing a national news story where there was a provoc an agent provocateur. I, so I exposed the guy, broke a national news story. So I've seen it on the ground. Okay, I'm not trying to say I'm like a veteran of this stuff, but I have seen how this works on the ground. I had the guy come up to me afterwards and say, you know, you ruined all of my political aspirations. I was going to be a lawyer. I was going to be a big Democratic Party, you know, candidate. Uh, you you ruined that. I was like, well, you should yeah, be yeah. an agent provocateur. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not my fault you did that. But uh, so this is so I I can absolutely see the potential for it. You, you got uh, into your running man, you know, and that was interesting. Yeah, your recent, yeah, yeah. So yeah. so you know, the, think about two two great examples from film revealing this revelation of the method itself with Wag the Dog, where the producer is completely films the uh, an Albanian war that's completely made up you know and Kirsten Dunst is playing the little uh, girl who's got the she's actually in the film she's oh, yeah. actually got a bag of Tostitos <laughs> <laughs> and they uh, you know superimpose a kitty and she's running yeah. with her, her puppy or a kitty a kitty she's running running from the bombs with her kitty uh, Hunger Games actually as well this comes up in Hunger Games where Katniss discovers that the the capital is creating completely fake news stories. 
Uh, it comes up in, um, like you said, in Running Man, um, where, you know, he's he's run away. He's actually gotten away. Uh, but uh, for the ratings and for the, the propaganda, the one state controlled network needs to have a big bloody death scene. So they just superimpose, you know, Arnold's face onto some guy and, you know, just Captain Freedom, yeah. Jesse Ventura comes in. And <laughs> and it's like also the, the alleged uh, assassination of Osama bin Laden. Yeah, you know, just so ludicrous on its face, yeah. but it's right on the media and people just accept it, even though it has all the all the all the hallmarks of a lie because they, they have provide no evidence. They dump the body in the Indian Ocean for no particular reason. <laughs> it's like, oh, what? I mean that one is just, like, that one is just and that one is truly. I shake my head. People, uh, you know, I, I think it was a. I, uh, and you can even have people like Cy Hirsch uh, write uh, a famous uh, famous piece. Saying that yeah, it's fake. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter who, how prominent, respected, intelligent uh, the person is. This, the, this is the scary stuff. The scary stuff is how well uh, people can be sold an ideology or a belief based on, you know, just simple tricks, simple, simple uh, David Copperfield black black magic type tricks where it's you know that you want to believe you know you want to believe that we're the good guys and, and we got bin laden never mind the fact that the photo of of uh you know the the dead the dead guy is actually uh a, a cgi photo that they use for Gaddafi as well it's this exact <laughs> well, same you, photo. A, you can talk about the psychological war, the history of it and warfare is um i mean I mean, you you have intelligence operations that are designed to say exploit a society's uh, superstitions or fears, and I think you've mentioned this before with um, Ed Lansdale when he spread the rumor of vampires in the Philippines in order to uh, undermine the Huck movement, exactly. which is a communist, uh, they so-called communist re rebel group that are challenging U.S. control of the Philippines. And what he did was they would kidnap a, a member of the Huck, like in a, they were walking a. a on patrol, they could kidnap the last guy, like on TV, where you see that happen, and they'd drain him of blood. And then they'd find their compatriot in the morning, and they think that one of these uh, vampire type creatures got him. Yeah. Yes, that uh, Victor yeah. Marchetti's book on the CIA. The Vietnam with the Ghost Soldiers. That in there. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and I think it was uh, I Aquino up too. Was, was involved in that, you know, that Colonel Aquino character, which is interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, I know about Aquino, but what what is this? Ghost soldiers. Ghost, basically, ghost basically soldiers? they make noises and th we, weird. Some people think that Aquino summoned the occult. I don't know about that, but um, he was involved in it. They basically uh, creating sounds and images of ghost soldiers in the jungle to uh, create fear among the Viet Cong. It was a local superstition. Yeah. Wow. Well, now that one's that's a new one to me. It doesn't surprise me, but that's a new one. I hadn't heard that. One. Now uh, I've dug up a, a neat academic article uh, this guy's a leftist probably a communist socialist but his article is insightful in so far as he goes through uh, an extensive treatment of uh, cia operations in chile jamaica and nicaragua and what the cia did there was play on uh, the local ah, yeah, uh, yeah, marian yeah. beliefs uh, you know, again, this is not to, you know, go after Catholics or whatever. It's just to point out that this is this is a tactic that's used across the board. And even if you are skeptical, you know, that's fine, whatever. But uh, when you look at this guy's uh, essay, what he shows is that the the all the news publications that were put out uh, were it's very, very scientifically done. So you might have if there's a politician that you want to uh, demonize, uh, what you might do, for example, is have him on the front page, uh, you know, up at the top left or whatever, and then directly, you know, next to that or diagonal to that, have an image that is, you know, death. You know, have, have somebody in some gruesome pose there, right? So. What happens is that the eye is immediately drawn from that image and, and the way that the picture would be constructed, it would draw the eye down to the next image. So what, what's happening is that the, the mind is subconsciously associating, you know, the politician, you know, Javier, whoever, with uh, death, right? And so, in other words, all of this is just outlined. Yeah. And that's just one example of how scientifically this is done. 
Uh, but he gives plenty of examples as well of uh, staging Marian apparitions and staging uh, uh, different so-called supernatural events generally speaking to motivate motivate the pop, pop uh, the populace the, the local playing on the local populace of superstition so um, the the essay is called um uh, where was it cia psychological warfare yeah. operations in chile nicaragua nicaragua and jamaica uh, so that's a good one to read just to get an idea of how, so how it plays let's out apply, let's say uh the same people who are waging these uh, operations overseas uh to alter the political environment, say, in South America or Southeast Asia. Say they wanted to alter the political environment here at home, which I don't think they're... <laughs> I, don't, I think they're very concerned with the political situation here at home as well, if not more. They, they, Applying those methods, they would try to exploit the fears and so-called superstitions or, you know, things that, that, would, that would affect Americans. What would that be? That would be maybe fear of instability, uh, uh, fear of serial killers, so, yeah, children to go out and play. Go. Anymore, say it, children to go out and play and deal with one another, and develop those skills. They're going to be less likely to be independent thinkers, and they're going to be antisocial. They're going to go go on video games and become gamers and be more manipulable, right? I mean, am I? Yeah, right. know, that's where I. And that's where Absolutely. it's so chilling because you're like, I mean, it's hard to believe that actually people think this way. But again, the, your average common man's only ambition is to live a quiet life. They can't fathom trying to manipulate society this way. You know, so yeah, yeah. You know, they can't fathom that there would be classes of people that even, uh, even. I mean, that's just so far out of their their uh, way of thinking that that it's it doesn't even yeah. enter into the possibility. So absolutely, <laughs> and the various think tanks and psychiatric <laughs> associations. These these institutions, the Pentagon, DoD, uh, where you know people are well paid to think this way. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean. Ho Let's just take one of the MK Ultra doctors, uh, Jose yeah, Delgado, okay. has oh, a book yeah, called that? Mind Control. <laughs> and it's still people who so there, I mean, mention Mind Control. One example, I think you're right? talking about a Hollywood movie. As if it doesn't exist. As if, as if advertising isn't one level of Mind Control. Right. You know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the whole, yeah. the whole rise of ab advertising um, is concurrent with the rise of uh, mm -hmm. you know, really scientific psychological warfare, especially after, you know, out of World War II. Um, there's a an excellent book. Um, it's one of the classics of uh, psychological warfare that uh, comes out of World War II, where it's an analysis of uh, Nazi propaganda and Allied propaganda. What is it? It's a uh, guy's name starts with L. Landis or Not Land Lansdale, is it? I can't remember his name, but uh, that okay. it may be. But it's 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 well known. It's it's you know written in the fifties, I think. But uh, but the, even though it's a little dry, it's worth reading because what you see is that the, the techniques of, uh, you know, of dropping pamphlets and all that, what the pamphlets are, of course, uh, you know, specified and, and, you know, scientifically done as well in a certain way uh, to appeal, uh, you know, to local sensibilities. So th what, what the intelligence agencies do is they do all these ethnographies where you, you know, everything about uh, local dialects, local uh, traditions, local, you, you have to know everything about the people that you can. Um, I have some old uh, 70s uh, CIA uh, manuals and uh, textbooks that were actually used uh, at Langley uh, and of course declassified now, but uh, they're excellent to read for, for getting an understanding of how, how this still goes on because you have to know everything you can. So you need to know even to the point of like how people um, linguistically have different ways of saying things. Uh, and so that will factor into, you know, the propaganda that you're going to use because you can't just, you know, you can't just write out a paragraph of English and, and try to, you know, propagandize some, uh, you know, villager somewhere using that. You've got, you've got to, it's got to be tailored and, no, and specified to that niche. And so exactly. And, and that's exactly what these think tanks do with and foundations with their uh, policy papers and, and strategies that go after these different niches so that the the the, the, um, the targeted uh, message to feminists has got to be one way uh, the targeted message to you know uh, to blacks and people in uh, you know low-income areas has got to be a certain way uh, and it's all it's all completely scientifically done um, and it's 
completely. I mean, Rand is always, of course, the best example for this, or because Rand is who, you know, really transitioned us to a consumerist society out of a, uh, you know, industrial production-based society into a, you know, debt-based consuming society uh, based on their strategies and plans. Uh, so, you know, that can't get any, I mean, you can't yeah, get any you, clearer than that. Yeah, you're consuming and following and the, that the, carrot, the, it's easy to control them. You can, you know, so. Uh, and we just want, exactly. I want yeah. to bring up and so get your thoughts on this, because I, as I listen, I, I'm kind of a, I, I'm a, a, I'm kind of a synthesizer of these various ideas, and I take in a lot of uh, various opinions on these things, particularly on, on the conspiracy angle regarding these incidences, uh, uh, like Sandy Hook and all that. Um, right. Yeah, because I try because I, I'm not I, a witness, I, I wasn't too. there, and so I didn't witness these things. So I'm as blind as anyone else, really, uh, and dependent on anyone else's information that comes in. And I'm mindful of that. So I'm skeptical. You know, I realize there, there can be some false leads, cognitive infiltrators, and things like that. Um, but there's still a lot of acrimony within that within the so-called truth community in these things because, um, again, uh, I was listening to a, 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 a podcast recently. Uh, they were talking about CIA in the movies. And the, the the host of the podcast, who, mm. uh, who I like, well, actually, I'll say his name's Tom Secker. I like him. His, his analysis is very interesting. He, he comes out of the UK, and he has this thing called CAA in, in the movies. It's a series he did uh, this year. Very interesting. And um, mm-hmm. they were going a little bit off on um, some of the, um, the uh, I guess you could say, the no planers and the no deaths at Sandy Hook and all that. And I'm not committed uh, one way or the other on that issue. I just know there are some anomalies which defy an explanation, which, ha- which, ha- which has me wondering. But um, uh, right. so they, 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 the, the people discussing this issue go on to say they go, these people are, uh, who say that no one was killed are just complete nuts. You know, they, they're, they're going to alienate uh, the general public and they're going to undermine any, any ground or cause the truth movement to lose whatever ground they've gained in the past few years by exposing these obvious false flags. And um, and so, okay, well, that's their views and all that. But then what I found was very interesting is as they're talking about the CIA and its role in culture and movies, they're talking about how intelligence itself has always been a game of magic, as in the gaming, as in experimenting in the occult. And if you go back to the history, I thought that was interesting because, well, if, if this is true, if, 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 if that really is a, a question of altering reality, changing, tricking people, then, of course, technology would determine to what extent you can do that, what's, it, what's over at your disposal. Mm-hmm. But if you look in the history of, of the intelligence world, it, it did involve conjurers. Like, I guess uh, you, you're familiar with John Dee, the Elizabethan guy. He was into, you know, Absolutely. he was a philosopher, a mathematician, but he's also in the cult, and he was a conjurer. He was a magician. And, of course, then there's Aleister Crowley. Who's this, you know, Satanist uh, magician? Mm-hmm. He was also involved in, in intelligence, and now we have the, mm-hmm. yeah, Absolutely. and then of course then of he, he established the OTO, the Order Templi Orientis, something like that, which gave birth to the Process Church, which some say had links to the Manson cult and all that. But um, then you also have, um, uh, of course, Anton Lavey and these characters, and um, there's, there's, there, there are these connections, and oh no, yeah. As that, as I mentioned earlier, one of the big names is, is this guy Michael Aquino, who's with the NSA. But before he was involved in the Phoenix program, he's another Satanist involved in the occult. So you see what I'm saying? There's, a, there's sort of a connection here to this weird black magic occult stuff to intelligence, because it's all about conjuring and confusing. Do you have anything to say on that? I mean, uh, any? Okay, go. Ahead. I mean. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. there's that. So there's no no doubt in my mind that uh, that's 100% connected because, like we said last time when we were talking, uh, there's a you mm-hmm. know you're, you're essentially trafficking in secrets, and so secret information um, has direct connect to the type of things that uh, intelligence agencies are doing, uh, as well as what uh, so-called occultists are doing. So. Uh, you know, in, in regards to say Crowley, it's interesting that he says um, it's it's Lieber something. I forget the exact title of the work. I've quoted it in a few articles, but he says, uh, you know, in this book it is spoken of Sephiroth and and the paths of spirits and conjurations 
gods, spheres, and planes, many other things that may or may not exist. It's really immaterial whether these exist or not, because by doing certain, doing these things, certain results, results will, will follow. Students are most uh, earnestly warned against attributing objective reality to any of this. And that's important because what, uh, and even Aquino says this, what you're really, uh, what, what's really going on here is more so the management of perception. And so it doesn't, if you can think, think about, um, you know, Katy Perry at the Super Bowl, you know, there's all these dumb internet articles talking about, you know, her being, her intentionally being, you know, some sort of uh, signifier of the end of the world. I, I wrote an article about how dumb that was, but, uh, but what is being done is, uh, utilizing archetypes and symbology and imagery uh, to project an image into the minds of those seeing it. And if you can, regardless of whether she's not, obviously not a goddess, but if, if you can uh, make her appear to be, or if you can have the perception of the mass audience treat her as if she were, then that's pretty much the same thing, at least from the vantage point of perception. So that's all black ops and, and uh, you know, psychological warfare is. And that's really what, uh, the, you know, a black magician is doing. He's doing the same thing. He's distracting you and getting you to believe uh, based on the illusion. And most of the time people are willing to and desiring to believe in some sort of deception or illusion because it's easier and it's more, it's fun to, you know, think that uh, you've got these powers or he's got these powers or whatever. Uh, so I view it more so as uh perception management um, and that's how it relates to uh, black uh, black black magic in terms of uh, stage magic it's the, essentially the same thing um, and that's what psych warfare is it's uh, def defeating the opponent uh, mentally and you know there's the famous quote of Sun Tzu that uh, you know most of warfare is fought in you know mental mentally uh, not on the battle so if you can defeat your opponent, in terms of his mind, then you don't even need to waste your troops. So, uh, so yeah. So all the way back to John D. I think John D. was uh, was a con man, uh, as were, were many of the so-called occultists. Uh, but being a con man does not necessarily negate their importance because uh, they were at least able to con quite a few people, especially if you could con a king or a queen into <laughs> thinking. Uh, into thinking that you had the power to transmute uh, base metals into gold uh, well then you you know you had your use at court so <clears throat> you know by the way all of this is in uh, if i don't know if you watch game of thrones but it's it's fascinating because all of this is in game of thrones you have all the same kind of trickery court deception uh, alchemists uh, you know scamming people and you know different uh, geopolitical strategies and so forth spies all going on in that fiction show so you know Every, everybody can watch Game of Thrones and figure out what's going on, but they can't figure out what's going on in the real world. Uh, and that ultimately, I think, is that's the place of Hollywood. Uh, that's the place of, you know, that's why Hollywood is is a, a magical entity is because it, it exists to control the perception, to manage perception, uh, and to create the fictional narratives that speak uh, not just to our conscious mind, but also and to our And there was a liaison office so, from the CIA um, to Hollywood, you, and same with the DOD. And pop, yeah. yeah. As well as with the Pentagon and the Navy, which, yeah, I mean, there's some good documentaries on that. I think it goes a lot deeper than that. I mean, I, I, I think when you're getting into, especially uh, A-list actors, I think you're talking, uh, my suspicion, I have no direct evidence, but, you know, like with Jennifer Garner, People like them. My suspicion would be that a lot more of these people are working for intelligence than most most even conspiracy theorists would be willing to uh, to grant. Um, and again, I don't have I don't have direct proof of any kind of recruitment uh, you know scenarios, but uh, you know we do have these little hints and uh, you know things that come out here and there. Uh, I did. I thought it was odd that you mentioned with. Uh, or, no, I'm sorry, it was Dave McGowan was on another podcast where he mentioned uh, Bradley Cooper playing Chris Kyle uh, and Bradley Cooper being seen uh, in those uh, photo ops with the apparent troop crisis actor uh, 
in yeah, the, yeah, from, yeah. from the uh, Boston bombing situation. I've seen that, yeah. Well, uh, I thought I think it's I find it odd that uh, Bradley Cooper in Alias, also with Jennifer Garner, uh, in the show's narrative, he's a journalist <laughs> who gets recruited into the CIA. <laughs> it's so just now, I don't show. know. I don't have any proof that he is. A, right. But but I do. You know, I mean, there's just too many instances of, you know, film narratives having, you know, predictive programming and things like that to to take it. To take it as coincidence. I mean, you know, there's I've just seen as a student of film, I've just seen it so many times that it, it just, you know, can't be happening, especially studying Bond and all the Bond films. I mean, they're that, those are just packed yeah, when, with when stuff. It goes to the moon landing thing. Oh, that was and, funny. You know, <laughs> diamonds are forever. That is funny, and diamonds <laughs> are forever. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean there's, you know, you, you, you can, um, uh, for example, in uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, uh, there's uh, there's a little neat nugget that I noticed where uh, in the book, Blofeld's plan is to use atmospheric spraying uh, and uh, biowarfare and vaccines under the cover of uh, mind control projects uh, where he's studying all these girls for allergies. What he's actually doing is uh, uh, brainwashing them uh, and he's going to uh, set up these uh, uh, He's setting up an inoculation operation <laughs> to inoculate all of Britain <laughs> as a bio warfare attack. Right now, to me, that's odd uh, that, uh, that that's what's going on. And, and if I recall, uh, it, the novel doesn't mention the, the vaccines, but in the film narrative, they stuck in Blofeld explicitly saying, uh, I'm going to do it through vaccines, Mr. Bond, you know, uh, so. You know, you see all kinds of things like this that, uh, you know, after you see hundreds of them, it's just at a certain point, it's like, well, come on, this can't be this can't be accidental. And I think it's it's sprinkled all throughout film uh, as a way to, you know, condition the populace, to, the most obvious reason to get condition people to accept it. So even though they may not uh, consciously be aware 10 years later that they saw it, uh, you know, it's still stored in their memory somewhere in that subconscious sitting there that. You know, in the future, you're going to be doing this, this, this. In the future, there's going to be terrorists everywhere. The in the future, there's going to be the old, you know, this, yeah. this, this. Yeah, uh, but that that would go with your your. I think your thesis regarding the Bond genre, the Bond series of films, is that it's projection. Whereas Spectre and Blofeld are actually they're the ones carrying out the Anglo-American agenda. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, really. Oh, absolutely. Bond, yeah. And it's and and um, and. You know, really to salt to seal the deal on that one is that when you read yeah, about yeah. Uh, Fleming himself, I mean, he was high level naval psyops, so he he was not just a uh, low level uh, naval officer. He was actually doing you know pretty Same heavy United States, uh, allied uh, psyops work. After the war, uh, many of the people that went on to head CBS and AB or NBC, Sarnoff, William Perry, they were all psy psyop guys from the wartime psyop guys. Yeah, even David Rockefeller um, spent a good bit of time when he was young. Yeah, so um, the, the, doing that was their thing, and of course the 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 broadcast corporations developed out of the government, and with the licensing and all that, they're always in bed with the government. And of course that much was admitted with uh, in the seventies with um, Colby when he said that you know they had four hundred of the top journalists on the payroll. And just recently we've had Absolutely. the West German, uh, yeah. the German the reporter admit that too. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> uh, Udo or whatever his name was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that they're on the payroll. I know and you're talking course, about. Yeah, when you take that into consideration, uh, that to the, to the extent that the media is the, the mockingbird media, uh, uh, that events could be faked, and the infrastructure is there, the people are in place, the methods of control, it's all there. And so to suggest that it's a possibility, I don't think is 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 a, is too far of a stretch. Well, let's not forget the greatest hits of fake yes, from CNN. Gulf I mean, we think back to that <laughs> clip that everybody's seen of the Gulf, Gulf How War. How can you watch that and believe uh, anything? And there have been some, yeah. right? There have been some gems of late as well. With I don't remember his guy, but uh, he's supposed to be re reporting from uh, some. Yeah, I saw some <laughs> sea somewhere, and he's he's like he's bouncing on the. And it's just a completely a green screen. It's just it's yeah. I mean, it's and not even, even when, I remember when the Sanders thing broke. Uh, they 
this is the level of faking. This, this, this example is being lazy. But, of course, you had this scene of police rushing into the school. And, of course, it was a school, but it was another school, and it was a drill occurring some 50 miles away. And they're passing off as the Sandy Hook thing. You know, and like, okay, so they've done that. And then you also had the incident, um, of course, you mentioned the Gulf War incident, but you also, for what instance, I was about to think of, another incident is complete fakery. But you've been yeah, where they're just, you know, they're not there or they're you know, where they claim to be or some girl's saying that she's in flood water and some guy walks behind her, you know. <laughs> but that, that's, yeah, those are trivial examples. But there are more profound examples of this, of, 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 right. of, of the complete fakery. And guess once they've been caught doing that, it's, yeah, you know. You would think you'd so, lose credibility, but you don't. You know, there's also, there's been some speculation regarding Sandy Hook. I've heard evidence that the, there's no evidence the school actually were being had you know, have been closed for several years. Uh, people have been trying to get the records that would prove that, but they can't seem to get the records. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. followed a lot of that too with how big and all that, and you know, it's just even even when you get into the. It just like with nine eleven, um, you know, the, the, there's already uh, disinfo even yeah, exactly. in, you know, so you amongst know the uh, yeah. the so called truthers. So, so it's, it's it, and that's all part of the uh, you know the psyops, you know, smoke and mirrors dust storm of, of confusion. But what we can do is look at uh, you know the undisputable anomalies and the things that are that are there. I mean, I I often criticize empiricism in my uh, on my site. But that's not to that's that's a that's an ideology that comes out of the enlightenment so i'm not criticizing empirical information and data uh, that's very very crucial and important i'm very much a um, supporter of that obviously um, so you know if if we can uh you know just basic logic basic basic reasoning uh, can investigate these things and look and see that there's obvious anomalies. I mean, there's you know there's just so much with Sandy Hook that uh, that doesn't make make sense, especially with uh, the character of Adam Lanza himself as well as uh, uh, apparently like possibly a, a creation or a fiction. There's no pictures of him in the like book. Composite, like, right? yeah, there's all types of weird so, anomalies and so. And then that, you know one one of the one of the principles I would recommend. <laughs> this is something I came up with this week where you know in the alternative media conspiracy realm or whatever uh <laughs> it's what i call a uh, occam's phaser uh, and i call it occam's phaser because uh it it works on the principle that uh, when in doubt between different uh, options always choose the most <laughs> outlandish exotic ex <laughs> answer yeah yeah and that's what a lot of people tend to do is that they immediately jump to the most ridiculous outlandish example which uh, as I'm sure you're you're well aware, alternative media is most of the time, often, quite often, yeah. uh, either spooks or kooks, as I say. So, uh, you know, whether they're goofballs that actually believe something crazy and outlandish, uh, the, I think we should adhere to the principle that, uh, yeah, conspiracies are common and espionage is common and, and trickery and deception are common, uh, but really exotic things are not common. So I wouldn't jump to the most outlandish uh, uh, synopsis, uh, um, but as you pointed out, there are obvious anomalies, mm -hmm. as with 9-11, as with any of these other instances, where we can definitely say, uh, you know, from an empirical standpoint, I'm justified, I, let me speak in the language of a philosopher here and say, as an individual, I'm epistemically justified in having doubt and skepticism and looking at alternate explanations. And so, um, you know, I, I, when people ask about specific conspiracies of, say, about the moon, um, I don't have a, a definite set view of that uh, scenario, but I do believe that given all of the other instances of deception and trickery, I am rational and, and epistemically justified. I'm, I'm well within my epistemic rights as a, as a philosophical thinker uh, to have skepticism about situations that don't add up. For example, <clears throat> this is just the most obvious one to me. NASA, on the one hand, puts out a complete total narrative that I'm supposed to accept about the moon. And at the same time, NASA consistently and constantly promotes aliens. 
I do not believe in aliens. <laughs> now, what I'm on the horns of a dilemma, as are you and all other people out there, because what are you going to do in this situation? I mean, if you accept that the moon uh, situation is absolutely correct because of NASA's, um, you know, pedigree or something, well, then why are they promoting the irrational this alien dilemma? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so, so for me, that's a, a, a contradiction uh, where I'm within my rights to say, well, I am skeptical of whatever NASA tells me. Um, that does not mean that I don't think they, you know, build uh, rockets and do things. But I suspect that NASA is probably kind of a public front that's uh, out there to, you know, operate for the public purview. While meanwhile, there's all kinds of, you know, the continuation yeah. essentially of the uh, SDI Star Wars Defense Initiative. That's the, the black budget space tech, Which might explain you know, secret UFOs, stuff is what's really there are just unidentified aliens. Black technology. Well, that, yeah. there's no doubt in my so, mind. Do you really that's, think that's it will prove to, to the, uh, the best, uh, you know, most advanced technology? No, it's so, uh, it's, yeah. Well, look at, yeah, look at. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Running Man. <laughs> that, you know, uh, I'm yeah. not. Uh, 80, 87 okay yeah. and he's using the infonet now yeah there was like one or two newscasts i've seen where some local news said uh you know in the 80s in the yeah. future that'll be the internet you'll you know you'll dial from your phone you know and try, your computer will use your phone uh, but uh, I didn't. I had no idea what the internet was in the eighties, and I, you know, my dad was in the navy. He had no idea what the internet was in the eighties, and <laughs> I mean, most people did not know what the internet was in the eighties. So, you know, just one little nugget example there with, uh, you know, the running man. He's sitting there ordering a plane ticket on the infonet. Uh, so uh, that suggests that you know. Uh, that's another consistent pattern we see that, uh, you know, the preparation for the, the mass populace for, you know, this really advanced stuff uh, is oftentimes done through, through has film. leaked reports uh, and also there's been evidence the government has encouraged the UFO or the alien phenomena in order to, well, to either to confuse people, to divert attention away from something and also or to, uh, you know, recently we've had a slew of like experts or uh, uh, people commenting, we, maybe we need to stir up an alien threat to unite the world, or, you know. So this thing, whether it's in the movies too, it's, right? So that, that is a meme that's put out there, and it might be to do that. It's a psyop, and, you know. It's, yeah, and people can be kidnapped, right? Even oh, these absolutely, there's there's operations. A, I, yeah. And when you get into uh, the the black ops stuff in relation to alien deceptions. Uh, you find a lot of the same characters. Yeah. You, you see people like Aquino popping up. You see uh, John B. Alexander, uh, you know, Colonel John B. Alexander, who was, uh, as I understand, been involved in uh, the development of uh, non-lethal weapons technology. So this is a, you know, definitely a, an inside military industrial complex uh, uh, person, a character, important figure who's very much uh you know in the background of these these all these alien stories and then of course hollywood uh picks up on this but uh for this the best example you could find is the uh well, I, I think there's evidence to suggest the uh, uh hadley cantrell's uh invaders from mars that uh, the orson wells uh were the world's uh, yeah, broadcast know, was actually a, I know a the Rockefellers took a very strong interest like in the reaction static. to it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then there's a book on that, and that was uh, studied for for PSYOP purposes, but that's really kind of one of the <laughs> early... Uh, I mean, that, 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 there it is right there. There's a, a PSYOP of, uh, you know, alien BS, and people fall for it. So the alien cover has a, a lot of different uh, uses, but you know, it, it's utilized for new age religion stuff with Ray aliens and people like that, these different UN, UN type groups and UN uh, new agey type stuff. And, uh, and yeah, the, what was it a few months ago, the 
or even in mainstream news that the CIA admits declassified that the yeah. the fifties aliens stuff was all them. So all that MJ uh, magic and, twelve and a lot all of that stuff that's just more take, of take a lot of the oxygen up in the room if you get people's atten- if you get a, a a group of people who are maybe naturally skeptical and they're uh, and you, you spend their time researching that then I can look at other things and um, yeah and to me the most ex- the most that's immediate expert cover. Is the, the most uh, I guess the the most plausible explanation of some of these things people see is that there there are aircraft or, or space vessels or vehicles that have been made or developed based on occulted or secret knowledge or technology that they haven't revealed and of course, we all get into the, the, the Nazis, you know, the whole story about the Nazis and the flying saucers after World War II, and how they were brought in and to develop aircraft, and maybe, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think that's a pretty, yeah. there you go, I and mean, that one's a pretty yeah. no-brainer there, that if, if yeah. the Nazis are working on Foo Fighters and these, you know, Frisbee-shaped craft, and then in paperclip, they come here and they go to Britain and they go to Roswell 47, the Union right, as well, so, uh, yeah. well then, yeah, uh, that's what's going on. I mean, it's, it should be a no-brainer in my mind. But, um, but uh, you know, as to there being secret tech, that is a different question. I think that's absolutely true. Uh, and, you know, if they're working on Foo Fighters in the 40s and 50s, then there's no telling what's been developed now, especially I do think there's evidence to show that uh, the, the technologies that Tesla developed were had the potential for kind of a revolution in physics uh, based on a different metaphysic than what the Royal Society uh, puts out for mass consumption. I do think there's evidence to suggest this, um, especially the more, the more that you read about Tesla. And I don't mean to be getting into really esoteric uh, esoteric stuff, but, I, but there are alternate secret versions of technology. Um, unfortunately, you know, the, the Tesla zero point energy fields. Yeah, yeah populated with a bunch of con men and, and deception as well. But there's something to this because we think about the internet itself. I mean, this idea goes back to, you know, wireless goes back to Tesla. So Tesla had an alternate metaphysic um, that originally was informed by his, uh, you know, Serbian Orthodox submarine. Uh, and then uh, he later got into things like theosophy. But uh, what he what he retained from this was, you know, the idea of there being ether and there being a sort of this, you know, subtle, subtle uh, further layer of, of reality that sort of integrates all the others that um, the other dimensions, if you will, the, the three for three dimensions uh, and this the existence of ether uh, can be tapped into. It can be used to transmit information, data, energy. Uh, and we see all of that now. We see stories of, uh, you know, wireless transmissions of energy, um, you know, uh, whatever one's opinion of uh, the different um, perspectives on quantum physics are, and I, I do be- believe and understand that a lot of that is tainted with uh, New Age gobbledygook and deception as well. But when I read people like Werner Heisenberg and, and guys like that, you know, they confirm for me at least that a lot of what Tesla was saying was accurate, um, and that's why he, the, the Navy, con- uh, con- uh, confiscated his documents. In his papers, well, originally I think it was the FBI or some you know government group, but uh, now the Navy supposedly has possession of uh, Tesla's documents. But the document, there's a lot of Tesla stuff that's not declassified, but supposedly the <clears throat> documents saying that his documents are classified are declassified. So you know maybe those are fake too. I don't know. But but if I look around and I see you know cell phones you know transmitting data wirelessly uh, and I when I look at EMF, ELF, BLF technology and the stuff that uh, Aquino talks about, for example, in his PSYOP treatises uh, about, um, you know, electromagnetic warfare and what can be done to the body and the body's uh, uh, frequencies through uh, frequency warfare. Uh, That, to me, says that, uh, you know, all this stuff, directed energy weapons, et cetera. All of that, you know, goes back to Tesla and it's very real. And they're obviously working on a different version of physics than what, uh, you know, the, than the mass consumption physics that, you know, I was taught, for example, in, in uh, There was, I in guess, uh, in, in high Joseph school. Farrell does a lot of work on that, in that, the Nazi bell and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, 
I, I had I've interviewed Farrell once, and I have some disagreements with Farrell. So I, I don't. I mean, I'm not trying to. I mean, I think that some of that's right, uh, and I don't mean to. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to. <laughs> how can I say this? I, <laughs> I, I agree and disagree with Farrell, and you know I'm not ripping off uh, Farrell. I, in fact, the first interview I did with Farrell was um, around 2008, I think, and uh, I had not read any of his stuff except his uh, theological trilogy. And uh, we got in, onto the subject of ether uh, because his book uh, turns out his book Unified Field Theory is is based on uh, ether and all that. So. Um, you know, obviously I have been influenced by Farrell, but I, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of that that, uh, you know, I'm still, I'm very skeptical of. The, um, yeah, the, plant, know, the Giza Dust Star stuff. I don't think the pyramids were. Yeah, were, yeah. Were, yeah, that kind of gets me. Uh, <laughs> I don't but, think but the pyramids his were. His international Nazi but, stuff is interesting, because I think I do there's think, a lot to that. That explains the, the post-war world, I, you know. So, exactly, and yeah. I, do, I do think, yeah, and I think that there is, there has to be. Uh, just on my from my own research of Platonism and the history of uh, you know metaphysics, I spent most of my twenties studying ancient and medieval uh, metaphysics and theology. So I, it's not a subject that I'm you know new to, uh, and I, I definitely think that there's there's uh, a suppressed uh, and I, again I don't mean it in a new age sense, but there is a suppressed version of metaphysics and teaching about the natural world, especially that we're not given and we're instead we're given a uh, you know an atomistic uh, Newtonian yeah, uh, yeah. you know 300 year old approach to these questions that I is, is completely outdated and so you know my view is that the technology that DARPA is doing the stuff that's you know probably 30 years ahead of us as, as <clears throat> that we know about is based on all that uh, and for proof of that I would say look at what Werner Heisenberg says he says the subatomic Particles demonstrate uh, platonic forms, Pythagorean forms. They don't demonstrate, quote, materialism. And, yes, that, and that sort of revolutionary approach undermines the given power structure. It's like, I think it was J.P. Morgan. I don't know if it's apocryphal or not. When Tesla explained his theory about this energy, and he supposedly said, right. well, how do, how do I charge for that? <laughs> you know. Right, exactly. You know. Now, I, I thought it, I, I find it fascinating that, uh, you know, Tesla, this, the company Tesla is uh, putting out these, you know, supposedly yeah, yeah, yeah. more efficient home batteries. I think that's interesting. I, I don't know why uh, that would be permitted, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, well, if Tesla is right, then, you know, or, or if the legends about, uh, you know, free energy and all that are right, then, well, you know, that would mean that. That has to be completely controlled. So, you know, you, you can't, uh, the powers that be are, are going to want to release that yeah, yeah, technology is, uh, yeah, in yeah, their that's own a good time. explanation of what's so, going on, yeah. Because we don't live in a, especially in energy and industry and economics in general, we don't live in a free market. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, not even close no, to No, not at all. I mean, so when you look how at how corrupt it is, it's amazing. You know, I, I had not uh, thought much about uh, energy and uh, energy companies in relation to geopolitics until the last few years. And I read a few books on it that were really interesting. Um, again, I would not, there's, I have a lot of skepticism towards this person. Uh, but his book is full of uh, a lot of facts that you won't find anywhere yeah, else. And yeah, that's yeah, uh, Michael Ruppert's yeah, yeah, book, yeah, Crossing yeah, the Rubicon. I would just... I disagree. Well, that, that comes I disagree with his uh, peak oil stuff. Technocracy. Uh, King Hubbard, right? It Those does things. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it does, and but crossing the Rubicon has all kinds of facts that I've not seen elsewhere. Uh, interesting little insights and details and information in relation to um, black markets and energy and um, and all that. So. It is worth reading for that, especially when you look at the the P-Tech stuff and um, you know the 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 uh, ends law situation with the the back doors and uh, um, and a lot of the same stuff that uh, say Estelin talks about in uh, Shadow Masters, where he he points out the black market in relation to um, the global economy and energy, 
and Ruppert, I think, was invaluable for um, just just for that aspect, for for how much of the uh, the black market is really you know funneling, not just because it's all interconnected, yeah, yeah. as I'm sure you're aware. I mean, it's it's not like you have the drug trade over here and then you have this other thing over here. I mean, it's, the banks are at the top of this thing, kind of sucking all the you know, like a big parasite, like a big battery, yeah. kind of sucking all the energy the out of system is everything below it. So, yeah, yeah. debt based money is like absolutely you know, the craziest right. idea ever heard. It makes no sense, but it makes sense if you're a monopolist, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and they, Rupert, that, that, there's a, a life that would be a, a subject for a great uh, biography or documentary because it looks like his entire dark life he was victimized by the national security state. He had a fake relationship. I think his fiance tried to recruit him and then he was almost life was threatened when he was at LAPD because he, he he was uh, involved in some he saw the drug running that was occurring in LA that that, that was reported by you know by the San Jose, San Jose mm-hmm. Mercury News uh, you know you don't know I don't know what yeah but I mean you know I just don't know I mean I don't him or, you know or testify to the fact that uh, that he was uh, not not somehow controlled or maybe unwittingly controlled. Uh, but he was definitely on to something. I, I, during the early days of 9-11 yeah, and years, right. I watched a lot of his 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 his, uh, his uh, lectures and explained the drug connection with Wall Street and stuff like that. So there's definitely a lot there to learn from it by, re- by reading him or watching him. You know? As there's a lot of people just got to you know, look at it with skepticism. Exactly. And he might have had some of the answers. He might have been misled in some other things, like like all of us, right? You know? <laughs> you know it's just one of those things. Sure. So, Wow. Well, that's what I, I think what's so, for me in the last, I don't know, five years, what's been really a help was um, branching out into, you know, trying to read, uh, trying to read good material in different subjects. So, you know, not just reading, quote, conspiracy stuff. And if there are people who want to advance their, you know, their, their understanding, their research, I would, I would recommend branching out into espionage and geopolitics and economics yeah. so yeah. exactly and, and you really need that broad uh, that broad next level of studying things beyond the, the, here's the, the problem in order to do stuff. that you have to put in the time and read <laughs> and uh, that's mm-hmm. a lot for a lot you know, that's a lot to ask for a lot of people because you know i guess it is yeah i, I was raised by a, a it was there, yeah. Was an editor and a, yeah. a librarian, so I was. And, you know, I was and raised by books. That's the problem, you know, you know. Again, but then again, there's ways you can get, you know, there's other other medium you can use. I mean, uh, uh, YouTube has been good for that, and so if it can draw some draw someone's interest and make them want to read about something, then that works. But reading read differently because you definitely take in the most information. It's the higher order of thinking and mental ability when you're reading, and so you really have to read. And it's kind of you right. alone with your book. Absolutely. And you're, you and the author are engaging in a dialogue, and it's it's nothing like it. And that's maybe that's why they're trying to just. Dist- exactly. <laughs> that's why you have Common Core. You want to destroy reading. <laughs> you know. Absolutely. Oh, totally. Um, there are there are there used to be when I was in high school there were like ten bookstores in Nashville that I could yeah. go to and you know drive around and uh, you know I used to look forward to driving and and hitting up all the bookstores when yeah. I was eighteen. Uh, and now that's, that's sort of there the are two or three. So. Concentration, which all the broad economic mm-hmm. conditions and all the decisions are tend to be limited, you know, they're destroying the small, mid sized companies that gave people's jobs and opportunities, and they're corporatizing everything. Because these corporations, they're the ones that are lavish with the uh, black, with the, uh, the drug funds, uh, with the cheap capital from the central banks, and they're able to use that leverage to destroy the smaller firms that don't have that advantage, you know. Yeah, I felt like such a dummy having, uh, you know, read all this conspiracies. I started reading conspiracy stuff when I was about 18, and it wasn't until about 29 that I was starting to look at, oh, well, there's all yeah. this black market I wasn't, stuff. I was in my late 30s. You know, I started part of this. really uh, looking at this stuff. So. Yeah. Well, that black market stuff is, 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 again, such a big part of it that, you know, I was just clueless yeah, about and everything, you know, in my 20s. It so. makes you look at the police, everything. everything like it's oh, yeah. all a big facade. It's all corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just awful. It's just, you know, but then again, you shouldn't be dispirited because, you know, you know if you're taking the broader look, this is the way the world has always worked. And as we, uh, you know, uh, the, 
the principalities and powers have always belonged to the devil. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you know, it makes me think back again to, you know, what Machiavelli says in Art of War. You know, he's he's very pragmatic in it. And, you know, he's he's sort of laying out a, a strategies for, for rulers. Um, so all those principles, you know, from... Yeah. You know, hundreds of years ago, it's still applicable. Well, yeah. all the way back to Sun Tzu. So, well, like Jay, I've kept you a long time tonight. I'm going to let exactly. you go. So that's, uh, I want to thank you for it's okay. coming on the show again tonight to go deeper into these things. It's always a great talk. Um, again, you can go on forever with these things because there's, you know, it's a, it's a lifetime of learning. Um, again, well, uh, again, go to uh, yeah, jaysanalysis.com, right. read his articles, and support him. He, you know, he does good research.